as you're doing more and more thought leadership with people in your company, you know, and you're you're focusing on the the technical expertise as well as the maybe storing story uh, side of things and and maintaining your your people first approach. Like, how do you kind of navigate all that to make sure it aligns with your company and gives value? Yeah, I think you can do it in, in a few different ways, and you almost said it yourself. Uh, but I think it is storytelling. So. Uh, you can talk about highly technical things in a story format, right? And talk about how your customer, almost even in like a case study framework. So somebody had a challenge, this is how we problem solved, and these are the benefits that we created. And so if you just use kind of a fairly simple framework, uh, but introduce your team, the real team members that worked on it, not just somebody who's good in front of a camera or somebody who is super well written, like get the real story from the person who's out there 12 hours a day because they need to and want to figure out this controls engineering issue that they've got and they're in the middle of debug. Um, tell those stories of how we shared, you know, we've got this issue and we pulled, you know, experience from somebody else who worked on a similar system, but it wasn't exactly the same, but they thought through a similar challenge. And um, that's if you can get into these stories um, both from your team and also from your customer, um, that's how you're going to figure out and be able to speak to like what it means to be a leader in the space, what expertise you glean. And it's all through experience. We don't sell a product. Like we couldn't features and benefits you out of anything because we, everything we do is different. They're varying size systems. They do all different things. And so everything that we Basically, every challenge we encounter starts with a story. Hey, I've got this manufacturing goal and I need equipment to help me reach whatever my goal is. Maybe it's I need safer uh, production process or I need to go, I need to have a faster cycle time or the quality of my parts are just not there and we need to have an entirely new system with high, you know, high, highly advanced AI vision systems, I guess, for, you know, part inspection. And so, um, everything we do is really different. Um, so through storytelling, I think is where where you start. Right. And I think people, you know, it used to be back in the day that uh, companies would produce these like highly produced videos, like every line was scripted and everything was perfect. And and there was a time and a place for that. I, I, I still think that's valuable. But on the other side of the coin is this more authentic piece, right, of storytelling. And and people being natural and occasionally saying, um, or stumbling, because that's what happens, right? And, and you know, I think um, especially millennials and younger are more drawn to the authenticity, whereas some of the maybe Gen X and older are more drawn towards the perfection side. And it's not a hard and fast rule, but, you know, so I'm, I'm glad that people are being that more authentic uh, side where there's some mistakes that are said because we all make mistakes, we all stumble, and that's okay. Um yeah, not only that, but it's just the way that, you know, you've got to pay attention to how people are consuming content anyway. So what content is being created? And I mean, I'm pretty sure my like stepdad is on TikTok and he is, you know, boomer for sure. Well, like just wondering, like, if that's how people are used to getting content as it is, then then it's I think we need to adjust and ride the wave. So it's. People see past like the oh I, I agree that you you know have a company video have it scripted have it sure. you know planned for the most part but these interactions with your team talking through how to change the motor on a robot or how to troubleshoot your laser marker that's messing up like just film it happening right because it's real right, right? yeah yeah it's not an either or. You know, it's and that's why I use the coin. You know, it's both it's both sides of the coin because uh, they're both uh, beneficial. Um, I'm curious how much I don't know percentage uh, is of, of your content is like video versus articles versus you know how would you kind of break some of that down? Uh, I would say we're we're aiming to do more video. So primarily, what we focus on is video, um, and we're going to continue going in that direction. I, of course, you need brochures and graphics and 
we, we've done a blog um, as well, but I think video is the way people consume content. So you've got to be part of that. That's smart. That's smart. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I know a thing or three about video. So no, that's um, one of those as the things too were for so long. And I think this is probably true for a lot of marketing teams and manufacturing is it's, it might just be you. Like for so long, it was just me. And I'm like, I can't understand like what's wrong with me? Why can't I like get this, you know, marketing flywheel going where I've got all this content and then it is, well, look at what are you prioritizing and look at all the things you have to do and do you have the right people on your team or do you need help? And if that's the case, just because you can get through Adobe Premiere and make a video doesn't mean you should be the one doing it. And so I would right. encourage people to, you know, really think through what your goals are and if you have the bandwidth to achieve them, because I think a lot of times in our industry, there can be this uh, idea that like marketing is sending out a few press releases or attending a trade show or exhibiting at a trade show. I would challenge the thought that that is how you should be marketing for your team. And I would start by saying if you're in that ro in that position where you're trying to get marketing going and maybe um, luckily my leadership didn't push back at all and they didn't believe that those were the ways that we should be doing it but I think there is kind of some perception that sometimes I would say starting by educating your team on what's working and especially post-COVID not to bring up COVID but people started stopped going to trade shows but business still thrives so how did they do it they switched to digital and so why not take your entire budget or a portion of it just depending on the size of your organization and commit that to digital um because that's where you're going to, how to meet people where they are. They don't even have to come to you. You get to go to them. Right. So right. I, I guess that would be my advice on that. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting, you know, my company kind of specializes in in working with, you know, industrial and manufacturing companies that typically have between one and five marketing people on their team, but yet they're still either overwhelmed, overworked, uh, too many products or, or uh, sectors or what, you know, there's a lot going on. So like you mentioned, it's easy to kind of think, well, if we could just learn this tool or do like, but there's a lot to learn, you know, and, and it's, oh, it's always changing, you know, there's pros and cons to that. And so, um, that's one of the things I've noticed is like, even with a, a larger team, a lot of times their hair is still on fire <laughs> with all they're trying to accomplish. Oh, yeah. And, uh, just because there's more people on the team doesn't always mean there's more success. I've seen smaller teams have more success. You know, so there's there's some interesting dynamics there. For sure. Revisiting what your goal is and making sure people are all in the same boat. Like, where are we headed? Yeah. And are we all working Total. towards that? And that starts with being like a good communicator. It's something that I'm still working on. It's like, all right, now I've got some team members. Are we all doing what we should be doing? And are we setting the vision right and telling the right story um, to, to even our team to make sure that we're moving in the right direction? That can be hard, I think, as people grow their teams, I think. That's a skill too, being able to, you know, yeah, um, lead your team. So, totally, totally. Well, last two uh, questions here. This this uh, next one will be kind of a, a maybe a shorter one or whatever. I call it tool time. Kind of a silly name. Uh, so, tell me, is there a specific uh, favorite tool you use to improve your marketing that you're using these days? Uh, is it lame if I say HubSpot? <laughs> I love HubSpot. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's such an awesome tool. We use it for CRM and for marketing. And right. um, we don't even, we're not even using it to the capacity. It feels like the sky is the limit. There's so much more we can do. Totally. So, yeah. That's the the blessing and the curse of it, I guess, is like there, there's so much uh, there, um, which is super cool. But sometimes it's like drinking out of a fire. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to like keep ducks in a row. Okay. We've got CRM set up. All right. Now we've got list built. You know, we're working on list building. Let's make sure our data is clean. And I ran Salesforce for a big company for a long time. So I guess that's where my head starts. It's like, all right, this can get really messy really quick. So it's like, set it up so it doesn't. Totally. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Well, and last question, you know, what advice would you give maybe even to your younger self or to a fellow marketer, um, you know, in the space that's, that's, try, that's striving to implement a, this people first approach in their marketing? What, what advice would you give uh, to somebody that's doing what you're doing, but maybe maybe yourself at a younger uh, stage or uh, somebody just starting out there? Um, talk to people. Listen to people when they 
when they share stuff about themselves. Um, I think the most important thing you can do if you want to have a people first approach is to build relationships with your team and your customers and uh, build trust. And I think that starts by doing it yourself. So open up to people and, um, you know, it's not that groundbreaking. It's not some superior marketing knowledge, but I think if you can make people feel comfortable and create an environment where it's cool to share stories and leading by example, by educating on something and maybe they'll share, it'll make it so much easier than being like, oh, hey, hey, Brett, I've got to get you on camera. And I'm being like, not me, we you know, or like, okay, I'll do this because, because I know you want me to tell me why and what you want me to talk about. And, and I would say also, if they say no, like, don't give them a hard time because that's not going to help you in a long run. That's a good point. Yeah. Everyone's got a story to share. I think people have so many different levels of expertise all throughout your organization. And so, um, like, don't be afraid to ask questions or make friends. Yeah, that's good. That's so good. Well, Sammy, I really appreciate the the conversation here, you know, talking about uh, like this people first approach, uh, implementing, you know, uh, that hier hierarchy of needs, if I can say it, uh, and, and so many things. So, Sammy, thanks for being on the podcast here today. Jeff, thanks for having me. This is great. Great to talk to you as always.